Today we're going to be busting five myths about patellofemoral pain or runner's knee so that you can better understand the condition and you can enhance your recovery. Welcome back Run Smarter Scholars. Today we are diving into patellofemoral pain or runner's knee and is diagnosed uh, with certain characteristics that being pain around anywhere around the border or underneath the patella, so your kneecap, and very hard to pinpoint where the location is. Often runners will wipe their, their fingers around a certain border of the knee and say it's kind of around here, it's kind of around here. Um, the fact that it's so ill-defined and they can't pinpoint and point with one finger sort of hones in on our accuracy that might be runner's knee. Alongside that location, it needs to be painful when loading the patellofemoral joint with at least one task. That being stair climbing, squatting, or running or jogging, all these things load up the patellofemoral joint and someone with patellofemoral pain will need to be painful with at least one of these tasks. Okay, with better knowledge about the terminology and what it actually is, let's dive into our five myths. Myth number one is that patellofemoral pain is caused by a tilting or reposition or malalignment of the kneecap itself. And the theory being if it's drifting out of its position, either due to tight structures or weak structures, we need to then strengthen what is weak and we need to release what is tight. But with emerging evidence, trying to better understand patellofemoral pain, they do scans, they do diagnostic tests, and they've failed to come up with a correlation between kneecap position and tilting and malalignment and the diagnosis itself. In fact, a paper by Scott Dye looked at this, looked at the lack of correlation, and also suggested that anterior knee pain or patellofemoral pain is simply caused by different levels of patellofemoral loading, essentially meaning that the capacity of that joint to withstand load has been exceeded, usually by doing too much too soon, which in the case of a runner would be too much mileage, too much speed, too many hills in such a short period of time that the joint itself can't adapt and get stronger instead it breaks down and just becomes a little bit more irritated. Myth number two is that releasing the ITB will help knee pain. Now the ITB runs along the side of the thigh and attaches to the outside of the knee. And like I said before, theoretically, it has been suggested that a tight ITB would pull the patella across and cause patellofemoral pain. We now know that that's not true, but in fact, releasing your ITB or trying to release your ITB doesn't really do too much. And one of the most common methods to release the ITB is with foam rolling. And some studies, there's one done by Pepper and colleagues who took a foam rolling group. They also took a stretching group and a control group. The foam rolling and stretches did five sets of one minute each. So five minutes of foam rolling, the stretching group did five minutes of stretching. The control group did nothing and they measured their ITB length, they looked at um, the ITB with ultrasound afterwards, and they found that a single episode of stretching and foam rolling does not affect short-term ITB stiffness, so it doesn't really do much. And this is primarily because the ITB isn't muscle, it's not really much of a tendon, it's a very thick fascia structure, and it's so rigid, so taut, it doesn't have any relaxing or contractile properties, so you can't really manipulate it to create any more length. Myth number three is that you need VMO retraining to help the kneecap reposition itself. Now, your VMO is this small band of muscles around here which attach onto the inside of your kneecap. If they get stronger, it pulls it across, theoretically, and then helps with the relocation of the kneecap. We now know that's not really true, and if we go off the reality of our first myth, we know that patellofemoral pain is most likely caused to a buildup or exceeding the capacity of the joint itself. So therefore, just strengthening the entire quad, the entire muscle complex, will help raise the overall capacity of the knee, and we don't necessarily need to isolate these little muscle fibers to help the position of the knee. Myth number four is that the injury itself needs rest. And look, if it's really irritated and it's been painful with simple tasks such as walking, one to two days of rest may be warranted. But in reality, after this short period of rest, strength and exercise are highly recommended. And make sure it's within acceptable limits, and once able to, you should be able to progress that strength and exercise as symptoms allow. In fact, there was a 
2016 consensus paper that was released and had six recommendations for the best interventions for patellofemoral pain. And the number one recommendation they made was exercise therapy. And they said exercise therapy is recommended to reduce pain in the short term, medium and long term and improve function in the medium and long term. And finally, myth number five is that running is bad for your knees. The belief is that the repetition of the running action and the accumulation of all that ground reaction force will eventually wear out the cartilage within the knee. That's a myth in reality. Running is actually good for your knees. Running stimulates cartilage growth. In fact, there was a large meta-analysis looked at participants. There was over 125,000 participants included in this meta-analysis and they looked at the prevalence of knee and hip osteoarthritis. And they found that in the general sedentary population, the prevalence of osteoarthritis was 10.2%. Whereas for recreational runners of similar age, that prevalence decreased to 3.5%. So provided that you're training loads, training volumes within sensible limits and abrupt of chronic mismanagement, your knees will thank you. Thanks for joining me again, Run Smarter Scholars. If you have liked or learnt anything, hit like so I know I'm doing a good job. If you have any questions about patellofemoral pain, leave it in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have.